everybody to this session about R for Beginners from Zero. Uh, for those that those who know me, I'm Cynthia, and I'm um, almost a recent, uh, recently a member of the Dr. Kolaus team. So um, we thought that what's a good idea to uh, to make uh, some kind of serial sessions where we can talk about R when we are starting to, to get these skills. Uh, this is interesting because I used to, to use R um, like four years before. So it was good to me to take in again. So I had first information about all that, all that issue that we can like uh, find when we are trying to take in again. So it's like something similar, like to start again. So um, let me show you uh, and share with you uh, what are the main um, like steps that I think that are important to have a, a fast track into the into the R and the R Studio uh, program. So um, let me continue. <clears throat> I would like to start talking a bit about what is R. Well, um, R is an open source scripting language. This means that it's free, that you don't need to pay for that. And it's not too old, but this is because they have a, a P7 language that it was called AS. Uh, the AS program language uh, is about uh, for 1966. Uh, and this language was created just for statistical uh, reasons. So as you can say, the father of R is also in a statistical language. So that's the reason why in R we can find a lot of these uh, solutions that are now even, uh, that you can find the solution even in new packages. So that's the reason why it's uh, widespread. Well, the R environment uh, is designed to perform complex statistical analysis and it has the power to display results using visual uh, graphics. So this is one of the most important reasons why people like to use uh, this, uh, this interface. Um, now, where if we want to know how is R written, written uh, we can see that R has a lot, a couple of languages that have been working with that, but mainly it's based in C in Fortran and R itself, because many of the new communities that work with R, like Bio, Bio, uh, they, Bioconductor, they are working R to make packages for R, but not always was that way. Um, oh, here's, here's the sentence. Most R packages are written in R cell, but the heavy computational shock uh, is still written in C and C++ and Fortran. So, um, this is part of the, um, uh, of the um, background of the package itself. Now, uh, uh, the, the good thing when we take uh, these programs that have these new interfaces is that now we can uh, like make an interaction with other like languages. So R now can support um, the integration with Python, with C, with C++, with uh, .NET and with Fortran 2. So it means that if you are a Python user, for example, you can uh, make an interface with R in order to run the code that you have developed before. So it's a way to recycle uh, these uh, chunks of code that you have developed. Well, uh, R is also, um, it's both a programming languages and it's also a software development environment because, as I said, you can develop packages uh, in order to make more uh, tools to perform specific tasks. And well, there is an important point because of, I see that, for example, people wonder if R is an object-oriented program or it's a functional program because there is several kinds of approaches when we are working with, uh, with uh, developing programs. Most of the cases we are using some kind of functional programming when we are working with R, uh, with the base core of utilities that R have available. We are going to see this in the exercises. But R also can support 
the use of object uh, of oriented object programming uh, and that is a different approach. So it's a very complex uh, environment that can offer this kind of, of approach to do, and that we can use uh, any of them. Okay, so how can we start working with R? Well, further all, I think that it's important to know with what kind of application we are working and why. Wait, to, to work with R, we need both. We need uh, R, and we need our studio. And usually the people wonder why I need these both two applications. These are not the same. Well, uh, the easier way to explain this is the SZR is an interpreter. I'm going to talk a bit, uh, uh, a bit about this. And our studio is the high level interface. And it means that we have our studio like, let's just see, this is a box with a lot of utilities when you can do a lot of things that you cannot do just with an R interpreter. That doesn't mean that you cannot use R uh, with the use of R Studio. So uh, an example of this is that this uh, square that you see here, uh, this is an interface of R Studio and it's called like an integrative development environment. And the name integrative means that we have a pan, a pain, to, to write code. We have a pane to see the outputs in, in a console or in a terminal or in a way of jobs that you send to be processed uh, before. You can see also uh, the history of the commands that you are triggering. And you can see also uh, the variables that you are building. And you can have here this size, a list of the files that you are working. So an integrity interface is a couple of components that you have in the same box that you don't need to go out of the, of the program in order to have all the things that you need to develop a program. And so the R interpreter is just the, the program that is going to take the commands that you have here and is going to translate it into a machine code in order that the that the unit, the processor, the processor on you and your computer can translate it and understand what you are requiring. So that is the reason why you need an interpreter to work with with, with the night. Oh, here's a, a better explanation. See, some questions uh, about the interface. Do I need R Studio to interface with R? What do you say? Do we do I need? R Studio. R Studio is the interface. Is this is this uh, box with all the components that we need? What is the what is the answer of this? The people that just working with R. No, you don't need it. No, we don't need. We don't need. We don't need R, uh, the R Studio to work with R. We can work with R without this high level logic. And I'm going to show some examples in a minute. Now the question is, do I need R to run code in R Studio? Do I need this, this lawyer to work with R Studio? Well, the answer is yes. We need the interpreter because the interpreter is going to translate information that we have in the in the inter in the integrated interface. If you don't have the interpreter, the machine is not going to understand what you are requiring to do. Because the, the 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 high level uh, interpret um, the high level interfaces have the qualities to have a human syntaxes when you can write code in a more uh, common meaning. But the interpreter, what it's going to do is going to translate this information in binary code. So when the information, when the commands that you write are in binary code, so the processor in your computer can understand them, can understand the command. So yes, we need R to run R Studio. So this is an example we have here, uh, code in a high level programming language that in this case is R Studio, but can be whatever. And uh, there are several of these. We use an interpreter to translate information and we can uh, execute the code. So then we go to the next line. And this is the, this is the common flow when we are working with 
we are in our studio. Okay. Uh, in this in the figure, this figure is just to show you that not all the programs that we use work the same way. Yes, this is an R is an interpreter, but we have different kind of programs like compilers and assemblers. But at the end, the function of all these approaches is to translate information in binary code in order that the computer can uh, process the orders. Okay. The next question is. Um, is RStudio the only integrated development environment that is available for R? Is, remember this, this ID, this integrative development environment is a box with a lot of boxes that we have available to, to develop, to process, and to debug a program. So no, there is a, a lot of these. Uh, he have, uh, here I have some samples like, like IntelliJ. Uh, Eclipse, uh, Atom, uh, Features, and Rider. But um, uh, between these, or uh, among these, sorry, the, the R Studio is the most common of these. And it's not just the most common just by casualty. It's because um, it's, it's great for beginners because we have all this uh, information like so weekly. And also, it's very spread in the community. So the community that works with R uh, used to have a lot of use with R Studio. So you are going to find a lot of information about it. So it's important that when we are starting uh, to use a program, to use a program that has a lot of support in the in Google, in the networks, because most of the time you are going to have an issue and you are going to go to Google and you are going to find a solution. So if you, if you pick up uh, an ID that is not very, uh, I, I mean, that is not used for a lot of, of the community, uh, it's less information that you are going to have available. Well, um, our studio also integrates well with other tools and like our shiny add-ons and Git version controls that you need when you are working in these collaborative teams. And has a lot of developer support that is very important when we are working uh, with, with this kind of, of languages. And one of the main reasons what people like R is because have a great support to produce a lot of graphs. And this is just an example because they really have a big, 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 uh, uh, quantity of graphs and types of graphs, and it's it's very nice to support the chat. Okay. So now I'm going to talk about a bit about the installation because the idea of this session is to give you uh, the information in order that you have a couple of weeks to make this task. And perhaps we can continue talking about this, but you have an, uh, an environment ready to to make more interesting things and to have the experience to work with the program. So uh, there are some prerequisites in order to start to work. One is that we need the interpreter. So we need R. Uh, the, the, the current version is 423 or anywhere if you have one or anywhere. Oh no, it's 430. I can go here. Let me go there. Okay. So here, here we have the the recent version, the latest release right here is uh for three zero, but um it the kind of interpreter that you need to install depends of the uh, operating system that you have in your computer. So you need to be careful to pick up the one that you need. There is an interpreter for users of Linux, for, for users of Mac, and for users of Windows. So the only thing that you need to go into these three options and install the one that you need. And after that you do this, you follow the steps, you need also to install the RStudio, that is the ID. Yes, so I'm going to go here. And in the RStudio is the same. 
you need to pick up a version that is accordingly with your operating system. So, for example, I can install uh, this, this computer that I'm using, it's a Mac, so I need to download the RStudio desktop for Mac. And if you have a Mac that is, um, that is le less than 11 version, you can go back and you are going to find um, several kind of uh, packages that are according with the, the operating system that you have. So there are no specific steps in this session to explain how to install because you need to use the one that you need. If you have a Linux system, if you have a Mac system, or you have a Windows system, you need to pick, pick up an interpreter and an ID according with this. Uh, Someone have some doubt about it? Guys, no? Okay. So let me let me show you how is my system in order that you have what I have here. I'm going to go to the terminal. This is my terminal. So in my terminal. I have installed the interpreter. When I install the interpreter, I use uh, type dr, dr layer that is really an executable package to trigger the, the interpreter. And I can see that I have installed the R version uh, for 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And, and we have like a, what is called a flavor that is showstoppable. So that way you can see what kind of uh, interpreter you have in your, in your machine in the moment that you are working or if you are working in, in school, for example, uh, you can see what kind of interpreter they have installed. This is important when we are, we are, when we are trying to install some libraries and the libraries are uh, make it or design it to run with the specific versions. So most of the cases we need to have the latest one. So uh, this is a way to, to see this. Also, if I open my R Studio, let me show you here. I'm going to open my R Studio. Here. Here in the console, I have the version that I have installed. You can see here. This is the interpreter. And the interpreter is the same version that I have. It's basically oh, the same information, but you can read it here. So I have the same version of interpreter installed, and I can see in several ways. When I was saying that if we can work with R without any interface, it's true because if I go to the terminal, I can work here with the interpreter. For example, I can assign a variable. Let's say that I have X, and I'm going to assign uh, I'm going to assign the number nine to my variable. So I'm going to see what variable is stored in, in X. And in X is now stored uh, a number, the number nine. So I can do the same in this interpreter directly that in this one. So that's the reason why we can work uh, with R without, without to have to, to have installed an ID. But of course, the most um, useful way to do it is when we have all the information uh, contained in the same interface. Okay, now I'm going to go back. Um, now I'm going to explain. Um, we, we now are going to explore all the components or well, the main components that are in the ID of our studio in order that you familiarize us with this. And we can see that we have basically, let me start a new. Um, just to clean the window. Okay. So here we have a panel. This, this source panel is to write commands. So I'm going to do the same that, the, that in the interpreter. I'm going to assign a value to a variable. So I'm going to assign the number nine to X. And then I'm going to see the value of X. 
this here I can I can type a lot of comments in in a sequential order and I can run these comments and I can see the result in a pane that is called the console. So I'm going to select the command, I'm going to run it, and here in the console, I have the output. And the output, uh, I have the, the execution of that command. Now to see the value of this, I run this one, and I can see that the, val that the, that the value stored in X is nine. So here I've interacted with the source, pa source pane and with the console. So now, um, you can hear another another uh, section, another container that it's a terminal. Uh, the terminal is the same that I have here. Is just this terminal is integrated here. So I have here. I can do the same with the terminal directly that the, I type comments here. But it's also uh, an interface to to work with uh, with the clusters in order to have the information available here. For example, if I if I um, if I sign in the in the cluster here, liver, I have, I create here an interface with the with the cloud with the cluster and with my application. So here I can pull R again. I'm sorry. I'm going to I'm going to call the application, so I'm going to have the same interface here. So now here I'm working with R in the cluster. But now here I'm working in a local way. So the important thing here, I think, is that you know where you are working in local way and when you are working. Uh, let's say uh, that you are using this interface like a terminal. To make a bridge with the cluster. So there are different ways to work with R, and this is the very, very useful way to work with this kind of integrative environments, and it's the main reason why we use it. So this is the use of the panel, the, 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 the source pane, the console pane, and the terminal pane. And we have we have another extra container that is called the background jobs. And this background jumps is a container when we, let's say that we develop a lot of code and we have a lot of scripts separate uh, and we want to, to let running these pieces of code later. So the information is sent to a queue in order to process later because they are attached to, to a tape. Where, where the process is going to be processed. But you don't need to have an active process here. The important thing of the back of the background job is that this uh, process that is running in the background. It's not running uh, like an active process. So you can continue working with your console and with your terminal. And there are other processes that are running uh, in, in the background. Um, we have also uh, this side, another container that is called the the environment and in the environment we have um uh, we we can see the variables that we are creating for example uh here let me make it later here we create the variable that is called x and the variable is is listed here yes you can see here the variable and I can see the type of variable that is, it's a numeric variable, the length, the size, and the value that is stored in the variable. So wherever that you create a new variable, the variable is going to be listed here. If I don't want, if I want to destroy the variable, I just mark the variable and I erase it with this format. So now if I'm going to check if I have a variable stored here and you run the command, the variable X doesn't exist because I delete the variable just uh, some seconds before. So you can do this by commands, you can do this by the window, 
and you have many ways to do the same task. So this is this is why it's very nice for beginnings to start working with R because if you don't remember a command to delete a variable, for example, I'm going to create it again. I'm going to run, and let's say that I want to erase this same variable with code. So I can list the number of variables that I have available, and I can see that I have now in memory one variable that is called x. So if I going to, re to remove it, the variable, I just uh, call, call a command that is called uh, rm. I, I set the number of the variable, and, I, and the variable is destroyed. So if you, you don't need to remember all these commands. Just should, just need to know where are the information in order to continue working. And with the practice, you are going to be familiar with that. Okay, and also we have here another container that is uh, that is that is the interface when I can see the files that are attached to the project. Usually, when we are working with R, we have um, a project that is called um, that has the essential R approach, and each script that you create here and that you save it with this with this, this information that is here. Let's say that I'm going to say this script. And I'm going to put a name, my variable, my variable X. The name, I save it. And now I, I can see the new file that I have created here. So uh, this is like to be in your, in your finder or when you are in your exploring the computer. The only thing is this integrated in the same environment. But as you can see, the interpreter, the terminal, and all this stuff you can access by different ways in your computer. But the funny thing is that you have all this information available here, and this is what we want uh, in order to have a quick start working with the application. Now, so this is the information that I have in the slide here, what I explained. Uh, we have uh, a source code. Uh, we have a console to see the results. Uh, we have um, an environment where you can see the variables, and we can see a, a, a container that is a graphical device where we can see plots. I'm going to show some examples in a few, in a few minutes. So now we are going to practice with three scripts. One script is to be familiar with the integrative development environment. The second script is to go to the basic data types and common operations with these data types. And also we are going to see like a small um, um, introduction to matrices and data frames that are special data structures in R. Um, of course, we are not going to go to the whole detail that you have available for the idea is that you can see the power of the tool and you can have uh, like uh, the big picture of the of the information. Now I'm going to go to the same script, the, the first script. So the, in the first script, I'm going to use some basic data types that are the numeric, the integer, the complex, the character, and the logical data type. This, I'm going to use these data types in order to see how this information is interacting with data studio. And I'm also and I'm also to use a special class in R that is called devices. So that is to interact with the graphic uh, with the graphic mode. <clears throat> now <clears throat> I'm going to open the first script. This is the first script. Okay, I have some bullets in order to, to advance quickly with this. But this is <clears throat> what we are going to see. I'm going to create a variable uh, in order to run this line. You have several ways. I can put here just, just the, the cursor in whatever point, and I can just hit a uh, control enter, and I can run, and I create a variable x, the, no, the value of the variable is two. Now I'm assigning to the same variable the number 100. Why am I doing this? I am doing this because there's uh, some kind of, of confusion when people is trying to read these kind of assignments. 
some people use the equal, some people use the the, the left symbol uh, with the knife and symbol. Why? Why the result is really the same. Let's say that I want to do this here. Let me display the variable here. I'm going to do the same. And I can create the same variable with these two explanations. The thing uh, is that uh, in most of the cases, the use of the equal is designed to be used in high level, in high level uh, for high level for high level languages. And this, uh, the use of this symbol is used in uh, intermediate layers or interpreters. So a good practice is to use. Um, for example, this symbol when we are working in order to avoid uh, confusion, and also because uh, this symbol is more has more sense because we can see that the number two is assigned to the variable x, and well, we can it's readable. I mean, so for example, in this case, I can see that the number nine is assigned to the variable x, so I don't need to follow like uh, the right to left or to left to right. You can do the same. Just you need to declare how is the assignation. So these are things to take into account when you are reading code in Google. You don't confuse if you see sometimes code that someone is using the equal symbol or is using this kind of symbol or is making vice versa. That is all the same. And now if we we have a special command the, to check what uh, what kind of data is this. A what class? Uh, a what class it belongs? That is called class. So, if I check what class is it, you have here see that this is a numeric variable. But it's not the same than the type of, and I want to explain the difference. The type of say me that this is a bubble. So the class is a. Uh, it's a major it's a major uh, container that can have different kind of numbers because not all the numbers are the same. Uh, we have integers, we have doubles, we have decimals, we have so depending on the language that you are using, the class is going to assign a type of object. When is this important? Where well, it's important when you are making uh, when you are trying to re replicate a formula or something like this. So you need to be careful to have the correct variable type. Now I'm going to assign, well, I'm going to create another variable that is uh, y. So I have x here and y, and I have these values assigned here. I can change the mode in order to make it more simple. I have x and y, and I have two and three assigned here. What can I do in order to know my environment where with the variables that you are declaring, you can make operations. Uh, the kind of the syntax of the operations uh, sometimes have some kind of synonyms to be processed. For example, if I this symbol is a multiplication, so I'm saying that I want to make a multiplication with x and y. So it's the same to say two, two, three times three. So I'm going to run it, and I'm going to have the result. The result is the number. The number six that you can see here in the output in the console. Why is the reason where I cannot where I can see a new variable with the resource six here? Who can say me that? What do you think? Why I'm running this command and I can see the uh, a new variable here. Remember that I create a variable that, that stores the number two and another one that stores the number three, and then I multiply these two variables, but I can see. In the environment, in my global environment, I don't have the resource stored. Why? Come on, guys. Because you're not assigning it to an, uh, a variable. Exactly. So you're only getting the output, not the... Yes, yes, yes. That is that we are here processing the command and we are seeing a result, but we are not storing the information in any variable. And so if I want to store this like an result, let's put here a new variable that is called result, and I'm going to assign the, the, the result of the x per, per y. So I run this, let's see this panel. 
And now I have this new variable. The new variable, now the result of the operation is stored in a new variable that is called result. So you can see that you are interacted with the source pane, with the console to see the result of the interpreter. And we can see the variables that are stored in memory. So now we are interacting with all this, this stuff. Uh, another example is, for example, I'm going to this symbol. It's another example of basic operation. This symbol is uh, an exponent. It's used to make, uh, to write, uh, to write available to a number. So I'm saying that the number that is stored in this variable, that is uh, two, I want the result of two, uh, that is elevated to two. It means that the result is four. So if I change the, the variable and I run it again, I get a new result that is a two, where two, and the result where two. So I have the new result. Um, now, remember, the, the purpose of this script is to interact with, with all the items. Now, uh, if I want, we have like some um, screen common outputs. We can just to go back to the result of one variable store, just calling by the name. So I have a variable and I just put the name and I, and I run it and I can see the result here. I also can use a, a comma that is called print and I run it and I get same result. And, and so this is the common way to see the information within this plain text. Now, um, I'm going to take this data set. This data set uh, is a below data set when you, when you install R Studio or R. So you don't need to download for any type. The, the, the data set is included in the, in the package. So uh, the, if I want to see what information is stored here in empty cards, it's a direct test. And like I said, I can see that the information stored here is, um, let me just, just call it the first five comments. It's, um, it's a data frame that gets information about cards model of cars, the, the miles per gallon and cylinder, cylinders that they have. And this information, um, we are going to play with this information in order to see the, the visual output in this environment. It's the reason why I'm taking this. If you don't want to deal with cars, there is a library that is called Mass. If you pull this information, And I I I call I I call the the library and keep in data. You are going to have all the data sets that you have available in order to practice. So now, in this moment, I'm, I'm taking this, this data set. But for example, you want to work with chicken weights, you can take this, uh, this data set to practice. I'm going to take here the same, and I'm going to, to show you what is in chicken. Thank you. Let's see. Hmm. It says the rest. I don't copy well. So in this data set, I have uh, different information. This is a uh, this is a matrix with information about the weight, the time, and the chicken, the diet of the chickens. So you can you can play, you can play a lot with these kind of data sets in order to practice. So now I'm going to go back to this information in order to see how we can plot information here. And to do that, we need a, a data set. That's the reason why I'm talking about this. Okay. 
We have here a special class that exists in art that is called devices or that. And you can see here, just to see that now in this moment, uh, my devices is in no state. So in order to play with this, I'm going to create a plot. And this plot is uh, gener generates a random numbers. And, and I'm going to go here. It's generate random numbers, it's a hundred number random numbers, and it's going to to send the result to this container that is the that is the device, the visual device that is active in this moment in R. So uh, in order to see another example, I'm going to plot the number from one to 50. So I get the output here in order that you can see the, the dynamic of the environment. And also I can check now that my current device now is uh, assigned to the R Studio uh, graphic device. Yes. So this is the way when we are interacting with the command, with the terminal, and we are plotting the information. Now I have another device installed in my in my computer that is called Exilerem. So let's say that I'm call, I'm going to call this new device. It's open a new window. And now if I list the information, I can see that I have now a new device uh, available or active in my in my equipment. Now I'm going to plot information. Last second here is here. Let me link it. It's here now. So, uh, so we have we have the ability to interact with several devices. If you know how to change uh, between one and another, so. Um, now, if, one, if I want to go to the to the previous device, I can use the set the set device that set in order to go to this device again. So I'm going to to trigger to run this this line, and then I'm going to trace a line. Yes, here this is the previous device, and then the eleven four. The 11 for device is assigned to the number four. So I now I set the device number four and I trace a, a new line. This new line is this way. In order to see the line, let me show you color. And I can see here the line. Yes. If I now list the number of devices that I have available, I can see that I have the, the R Studio a graphic device. This is created by default when, when it's called the plot, and I have this new device, the, the, the 11 floor. So I have these two devices. When I close this, let's say that I close it, and I check my Cuban devices, I can see that, that I have closed the, 11, the X11 device. Now, let's see that I want to use another data set that is available, that is called equality. And I want to save the information. Uh, I, I put information in a variable that is called temperature. Let's see. If I go to variables here, I have a new variable that is temperature. Uh, then I'm going to assign um, a number to store the information. And then I'm going to plot this information that I put in an Instagram. So now I'm going to go to the environment. Let's see here. Well, let me, because I, I forget to put this. Sometimes we are going to deal with this step of it in R. In execute line. So uh, quickly, Cynthia, what um, in the first, the temperature that you assign the air quality that you assign to temperature, you use uh, the dollar sign there. What does the dollar sign yeah, mean? Sure, sure. I'm going to show you. For example, if I read the database, the data set equality, let's go to running. 
this this data set contains information about uh, about uh, the ozone and the solar. It has a lot of information. When I use this uh, this sign, um, I'm saying that I'm going to have access to one of these columns. So in this case, I'm just pulling information that is related with the temperature. Yes. Let's just say that I'm going to use another variable. So just to call this way and you choose one. Yes. And so if I trigger this information, now your your, your values are different and you can use it wherever. Or the information that is available in the data set. So the important thing here is that you can see with this script that we can have use dynamic. We can create variables, we can pull information, and we can change among devices and that you have the confidence to to practice with this the information when i said that that that, that comment off is because i'm saying that i want to store the information like a file so the the file is now here if i click here i can see that this is the information related with the temperature yes and also you can use another kind of formats like pdf or another one i think that can support almost any format, uh, but well, you can try. So um, now I'm going to show you that the this list format we can see. And now in, in memory, we have these variables. We have rest, result, temperature, x, and y. It's the same information that I can read here. So I want that you understand that you can access the information, whatever you are. And I can remove all the variables with the, with the rm command followed by the list of all the variables that I have in memory. But I can also select here the variables, but you cannot select the variables here directly. You need to change the mode to grid. When you change the mode to grid, you can select the variables and you can delete it. But if I have the way in list, I cannot select the variables. So you can see that you have available different kinds of visualizations, but the visualization also has the purpose to give you access to other actions. So if you don't want to deal with this kind of, of containers, you can pull this, this command, and the command is going to raise completely my environment. So you can do it several ways. I'm going to finish this, this script with a list of common errors. The, the errors always is part of the of when we are making code. Everybody is making errors. So even the most experienced. So don't, don't be um, fair about it. For example, I want to print this information and see. In the console, I'm going to receive an error. The error says something like object result not found. So sometimes the the reason why we got an error is clear. Sometimes it's not. So you need to be careful with that. Remember that I erased all my variables here. So now I don't have the result. I'm going to assign a new value to result. Yes, here. I'm going to do this. And let's say that I'm going to assign the number five. Yes. Now I have the variable available. Now let's do print this again. And now you are going to receive a different error. That is not really an error, it's something weird. You can see that the variable resource has now the variable file, but I can see the resource here. Why? You need to be careful with that because, for example, in R, there are some situations where you don't receive uh, neither a warning and neither an error, you just don't receive anything. So that is the reason why I say there are some errors that are readable and are easy to correct. There are other situations where you need to know uh, more practice and knowledge about what you are doing. Well, the thing is that uh, R cannot concatenate uh, any string, a string variable that has characters with a number in, in a direct way. So it's not going to output an error, but it's not going to output the result. So you need to do something to, to deal with this. So there is, a, there is a different kind of commands that you can use. For example, I'm going to use this one, the list for paste, and I'm going to grab the information that I want to, to plot 
that I'm sorry, that I want to output. Let's see what's the mistake here. Oh, okay. Easy. Okay. And now I'm going to get the result here printed. Yes? So these errors are not implicit because there is a lack of capabilities that we need to tune with another commands in order to have the information that we have. So this is important to know this because if you are making big processes, you can have invisible information that is lost because there are processes that cannot be concatenated several kind of directives. And here, he, he, here I'm going to assign uh, to the C, uh, the number one, I have this new variable, and I'm going to try to multiply the number one pair a character that is called string. Of course, you cannot do this because you cannot multiply a number with a character. So this is some kind of common error that you are going to find when you are working with this. And here I'm going to try to plot uh, at least, uh, well, uh, I'm going to try to plot a vector with this information in the X and in the Ys, and we are going to have an error. The error here is that in this kind of, of simple plot that I'm trying to do, uh, I have different dimensions. So uh, the output is making that, they say, error in the x, y coordinates, because here I have one, two, three, four elements, and here I have one, two, three, four, five, six elements. So I can do this, yes. So here, let's do this. So the same, oh, no? one, two, three, four. Oh, okay, <laughs> another one, sorry. So I can have the block. So these are the usual things that you are going to find. And there are another kind of, of things like that you have a variable, that you are calling a variable that doesn't exist and that kind of information. So, so just try to read and be careful. Um, and, um, when I say this, okay, this, this is the same, no? It's just to, to be familiar with this. Uh, guys, I have not enough time to go to the script two and three. I'm going to try to share the information, but basically the same. It's just to more detail about the information, but the object of this uh, session is just to, to know what do you need. You need to install your, your interpreter, you need to install your ID, and you, you, you need to practice and see what is the information here available. So this is the, the main purpose of this, of this talk. And also to let you know that um, I'm going to, to go back with this in, in another session, is to show you that you have available uh, learning resources uh, that, that Lever has uh, developed uh, in, the, in the Dr. Colau team. And so you can go here and you can access, um, for example, uh, the YouTube channel when you have a lot of information about how to, to, to work with R. Uh, some of the videos are, uh, are for beginners, some for middle people, uh, some for advanced. And also you have um, available here, and I'm going to show this, that this is the course uh, R101, when you have basically part of the information that I explained. I mean, the commands, not the environment, but you can try with these uh, commands to do something. And perhaps in the next session, we can, we can advance more about this. So he had a lot of examples and it's a very good resource for the Um So I'm going to stop here and I would like to know if you have something to, some questions, something to say, whatever.